Good morning to you all. May I invite distinguished delegates to assume your seats so that we can get started with the morning session. This is to speak. Distinguished delegates, uh, kindly take up your seats so that we can get started. We are late already. We've lost 10 minutes of our time.
A very good morning once again. Uh, we shall begin our morning session. I invite distinguished delegates to refer to document 15.1. Uh, yesterday we had asked uh, uh, friends of the chair, led by Australia, to discuss agenda item 15 and come back to us regarding the issues that needed discussion, particularly the areas where we should have COP appointed councillors. So I will invite Australia to report back to the meeting regarding the discussions that went on in the Friends of the Chair uh, contact group. Australia, are you in the house? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. So the friends of the chair group in relation to the recommended COP appointed councillor subject areas had very productive discussions yesterday. The review process was agreed, noting that the process is flexible and the sessional committee will be able to react to emerging issues and topics and make recommendations to each COP if necessary. The composition of the recommended subject areas was agreed with one small amendment to the marine fish position. This position will now be referenced as fish, including expertise on harvesting, to cover off that CMS may require expert advice on freshwater fish in the future. The nominations submitted to date for the new subject area positions have been applauded. However, some parties requested extra time to supply relevant nominations, particularly in relation to the terrestrial mammal position. As such, we agreed in the working group that parties could have until 6pm today to submit additional nominations. Note that these nominations must contain all the required information as requested in the previous notification from the Secretariat. The Secretariat will then produce a comparative assessment for parties' consideration if we have more than one nomination for a new position. The review was conducted with extensive consultation occurring within the sessional committee, both of party members, current COP appointed councillors and observers. The formulation of the recommended subject areas reflects this consultation. The Sessional Committee is not intending to set these new subject areas in stone for the future. We heard a number of useful suggestions from the floor yesterday for potential new subject areas, and these will be taken into consideration through the ongoing review process. Thank you. Thank you very much, Australia. Um, I will open the floor just in case uh, to confirm that uh, what the friends of the chair came up with will deliver us. Do we have any variations on the proposed way forward from the friends of the chair? I see none. I take it that uh, that will be um, the consensus of this meeting. And uh, thank you, Australia, and all those that participated in the uh, contact group for a job well done. As you have heard, um, you still have an opportunity to submit candidates up to 6 p.m. today. So parties uh, that would like to nominate candidates, uh, feel free to do so by submitting all the required documents. Thank you very much. Before we conclude the item, let me invite uh, the Secretariat um, to give further clarifications on, on that agenda item. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Well, I think uh, uh, the, the report provided uh, uh, by uh, the Distinguished President of Australia actually covered uh, 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 all that is needed in terms of uh, 
uh, say guidance uh, to parties in terms of submission of uh, uh, additional uh, additional nomination just to remind that uh, the notification which includes instruction on uh, uh, the submission of nomination is uh, uh, notification 2019-22 and uh, can uh, easily be find, found on the uh, uh, website uh, uh, of the CMS uh, uh, as well as, uh, as a link uh, in uh, document 15.1. Uh, Thank you, Secretariat. I wish to remind you that um, in the session documents are already posted. We have CRPs already posted uh, on the website. So I encourage you to keep checking in the in-session folder uh, for the CRPs. We shall have an opportunity to begin clearing uh, the CRPs starting this afternoon. So kindly check the in-session documents and familiarize yourselves with uh, the documents that have been posted so that when we get uh, to clear them, we don't take a lot of time. I must tell you, we are still behind the schedule. So I uh, implore you to assist me to catch up with, uh, with our program. I will now invite... Um, chairs of working groups to update the meeting uh, on progress so far in the working groups, starting with budget committee, budget working group. Nora, you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much and <coughs> good morning. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the Budget Working Group has had uh, two meetings and uh, we're planning a third one today and probably also tomorrow. So I'm hopeful that we will uh, come up with a, uh, uh, a proposal after today's meeting. And uh, if not, we will do the details tomorrow as well and then we will do a walkthrough of the, of the resolution and then... Uh, the, the target is to conclude uh, at the end of the workshop session tomorrow. I think that's the short message from our working group. Thank you. Thank you, Nore. Let's uh, hear from uh, the chair of uh, the Avian Species Working Group. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Avian Working Group met last night for the second time with many parties and observers in attendance. We've gone through all five Avian documents which were sent to the Working Group from the CAO. We finalised discussions on document 2615, the action plans for birds, and a conscience room paper has been produced and is online. And we still have some outstanding issues to discuss in the four remaining documents on illegal killing, land birds, flyways, and poisoning. And we shall also be discussing the listing proposal for the Little Bustard. Three small contact groups will be meeting during lunch to discuss alternative wording to open points. And we will meet again this evening at 6.30 in the Working Group 1 meeting room and hopefully be able to conclude on the remaining open issues. Thank you. Thank you. Chair of the Avian Working Group, let's hear from uh, uh, Terrestrial Species Working Group. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Good morning. Terrestrial Working Group um, met yesterday the first time with the parties and observers. And once the, uh, the Terrestrial Working Group uh, related documents not presented at the conference of the whole, we shared some comments and positions, and then we are waiting when it is introduced officially. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Terrestrial Species Working Group. Let's hear from Aquatic Species Working Group. Thank you, Chair. Um, the 
chair of the Aquatic Working Group asked me to report on his behalf, as he'll be a little bit later. Um, the Aquatic Working Group had nine documents referred to it. Uh, we managed to go uh, through all of them and include um, the comments received from parties and observers. Um, six are online in English as a conference room paper, so we have concluded the work. One is pending the discussion on light pollution um, and can be finalized immediately after that. Two documents are still going to be discussed in the next uh, session. Those are chondrichthyan species and bycatch. And uh, the listing proposals relevant for aquatic will also still be discussed in our session. And we are proposing to meet at 7 p.m. tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, respective working groups, uh, for the progress so far made. We shall now move uh, to agenda item 26.3, terrestrial species. I invite distinguished delegates to look at document 26.3.1 on joint CITES CMS African Carnivore Initiative. I now invite the Secretary to introduce the document. Thank you, Chair. Document 26.3.1, Ref 1, reports on progress made to implement decisions 1255 to 1270 relating to the joint CITES CMS African Carnivores Initiative, in short, the ACI, and the conservation and management of lion, as well as cheetah, and African wild dog. In cooperation with the CITES Secretariat, the CMS Secre Secretariat launched the initiative at the first range state meeting of the ACI, held in November 2018. This meeting was made possible through the financial support received from Belgium, Germany, and Switzerland. The meeting was attended by 31 of 47 range states who are parties to CMS and or CITES. The draft resolution and decisions contained in Annexes 1 and 2 of the document before you compile all of the recommendations made by the first meeting of the ACI. Annex 1 includes the recommendation to the Secretariat to submit a draft resolution in order to provide the ACI with a long-term perspective. It also includes a draft decision to develop a joint program of work with the CITI Secretariat and IOCN. In this regard, I am pleased to let you know that CITES COP18 already adopted a decision instructing the CITES Secretariat to develop a program of work for the ACI in close cooperation with the CMS Secretariat and IOCN. Also following the recommendation of the first meeting of the ACI, the government of Germany provided funding for a junior professional officer to support the implementation of the ACI. I am happy to inform you that this position has been filled last week so that our new colleague, Ms. Nora Weyer, was able to join us for COP. Comments were provided by the Scientific Council in respect to the draft resolution as well as decisions 13AA on the joint initiative and several paragraphs of the decision on the conservation and management of the cheetah and African wild dog. The comments are contained in the addendum to this document. With that in mind, the COP is invited to consider the draft resolution and decisions contained in this document and for consistency, delete decisions 1255 to 1270. This has been an omission uh, in the document before you. Thank you. Thank you, Secretariat. I now invite a very brief, indeed very, very brief comments on document 26.3.1 and attendant uh, addendum um, so that we can uh, refer the document to the terrestrial working group. So kindly make your interventions very brief. I will recognize the European Union. Thank you, Chair. The EU and its member states believe that the joint CITES CMS African Carnivores Initiative represents an excellent example of how different institutions and conventions should work together synergistically in a complementary fashion to pursue common objectives. 
the cooperation between CMS, CITES and IUCN for the support of range states under this initiative will maximize the effective and immediate conservation of African carnivores if properly implemented. In this regard, the EU and its member states welcome the outcome of the first African Carnivore Initiative meeting, which was held in November 2018 in Germany, as well as the decisions taken at the CITES COP18. It is a great to see that CMS and CITES COPs, as well as their secretariats, move hand in hand on this topic. With the resolution before us, the initiative is properly established for the long term. The EU and its member states therefore support the adoption of the draft resolution contained in Annex 1 of this document, together with amendments proposed by the Scientific Council. It is essential that, as a next step, the African Carnivore Initiative develops a program of work that foresees concrete conservation activities. In this regard, we support the adoption of the draft decisions contained in Annex 2 of this document as amended by Scientific Council and the process foreseen therein. We take note of the executive summary of the guidelines on the conservation of lions in Africa contained in Annex 3. We also take note of the roadmap for the conservation of leopard in Africa contained in Annex 4. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, EU. Uh, CITES. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning, everybody. Um, as we heard from the CMS colleagues, um, the CITES parties agreed at COP18 that the African Carnivore Initiative be included in the new CMS CITES joint work program for the period 2021 to 2025, and that the CITES and CMS secretariats, in collaboration with ICN as appropriate, develop a dedicated program of work for this initiative to be reviewed by both of our standing committees. The draft decisions in Annex 2 of the present document are fully in line and compatible with what was agreed at CITES COP18. I should note, however, that the CITES parties have not or not yet considered the need for adopting a resolution on the ACI. Regarding lions and leopards, the proposed draft decisions in Annex 2 are matching similar decisions adopted at CITES by the CITES parties COP18, which, among other things, call for acting upon the guidelines for the conservation of lions in Africa and the roadmap for leopard conservation in Africa, developed by ICN and shown in Annexes 3 and 4 of the document, and these need to be integrated in the work plan of the ACI. The CITES Secretariat therefore welcomes this document and the draft decisions it contains. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Saitis. Uh, IUCN. Thank you, Chair. IUCN would like to make a general statement on Agenda Item 26 and the sub-items under this Agenda Item. IUCN, through its Species Survival Commission, including the Antelope, African Elephant, Cat and Equid Specialist Groups, have been supporting the African Carnivore Initiative conservation of the African wild ass, the African elephant action plan, and the Sahelo-Saharan megafauna, from development through, right the way through to implementation. IUCN Save Our Species program, a regranting mechanism to support species conservation action on the ground, is already supporting implementation of the African carnivore initiative and the Central Asian mammal initiative. Given the urgency to scale up species conservation action, we look forward to continuing this work with the Convention. Regarding the African Carnivore Initiative, in view of the evidence for overall population declines, IUCN commends the collaboration between CMS and CITES. We offer to support the Secretariat and range states in the development of a program of work that aims to deliver on relevant decisions from previous COPs. We will continue to support the activities like the African Lion Database, the Leopard Roadmap, and the Cheetah and Wild Dog Strategies and Action Plans. We will refine the guidelines on lion conservation, in particular in the provision of harmonized protocols to monitor and survey African large carnivores. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ayusin. Um, I've not had any uh, proposals for improvement in the text. 
uh, do I take it that uh, this meeting has no objection uh, to the document and its uh, annexes being adopted for recommendation uh, for approval by plenary? Do we have any objection to the adoption of the resolution and the decisions and uh, the guidelines in annexes one to four? Nigeria, you want the floor? Take the floor, Nigeria. Thank you, Chair. Nigeria would like to intervene on the African Carnivals Initiative. With regard to paragraph 31, which refers to the results of the International Expert Workshop that took place in Seville, Spain, in April 2018, on non-detriment findings for hunting trophies of certain African species, included CITES Appendix 1 and 2. It was brought to our attention that yesterday evening, at the Terrestrial Working Group, Senegal raised concern of a lack of consensus and representativeness of this workshop. Nigeria would like to share these concerns expressed by Senegal. Paragraph 31 states that the results of this workshop represents valuable capacity building tools for Paris and the African Lion Rain States and contributes substantially to the implementation of Decision 12.67, Paragraph A, okay, V. Five, we do not agree with these conclusions for several reasons. One being that it is unfeasible to develop common NDF guidelines that work for all countries involved in the trophy hunting trade. In addition, we know that society's parties were underrepresented at this workshop. On behalf of Nigeria, I regret that parties of the West African region were not invited to participate to this workshop. It was reported that the majority of experts in attendance, oh, sorry, my thing went off. Sorry, Chair. I'll take that paragraph, uh, that sentence again. Nigeria kindly assist us to uh, be clear on uh, which document, which annex uh, are you talking about? We have annexes one to four. Uh, that's where the decisions and resolutions are. That's what decision 12.67. Paragraph, Paragraph A. A. Five. Five. Chair, are you okay? N Nigeria, that's a background document. Um, it's, it's not a decision to be taken by this meeting. It's just a background. The decisions are on, um, they start in Annex 1, Annex 1, which is uh, page 16 of the document. But in the case you have uh, comments on the background, we can still take them okay. as comments for the record of the meeting. Okay. Shall I continue? Chair. You have the floor, Nigeria, please. Okay. Let me conclude. On behalf of Nigeria, I regret that parties of the West African region were not invited to participate to this workshop. It was reported that the majority of experts in attendance were from the trophy hunting industry and hunting lobbying organizations with very few independent scientists. In conclusion, the survey workshop report to which the document refers to does not represent a consensus among the scientists, scientist parties. And the conclusions of the workshop reported were not agreed during the plenary section of the 30th meeting of the Scientist Animals Committee. We therefore ask that all references to the results of the workshop within the framework of the African Carnival Initiative be deleted. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you, Nigeria. We take note of uh, uh, the comments made. I see Born Free Foundation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we welcome document 26.3.1 and support the adoption of the draft resolutions and decisions alongside the Scientific Council's recommendations. We further urge parties to incorporate recognition of the value of collaboration with CMS partner organizations and wider IGOs and NGOs, engagement with transit and consumer countries in respect of trade-related issues, and the importance of effective enforcement into the draft resolution and decisions. We agree with the concerns expressed by Nigeria regarding the reference in paragraph 31 of document 2631 to the report from the Seville workshop on non-detriment findings. We would refer delegates to information document 34 submitted by a number of organizations, including a number who were represented at the workshop for details of our concerns. Thank you. Chita Conservation Fund. Oh, sorry. Let's have Senegal first. Senegal. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour tout le monde. Euh, nous saluons cette initiative de coopération entre la CITES et la CMS pour la conservation euh, des carnivores euh, et pour la conservation même de toutes les espèces vulnérables. Euh, nous apprécions cette collaboration avec euh, la CITES. Euh, C'est vraiment quelque chose d'indispensable, surtout pour les populations de carnivores au niveau de l'Afrique de l'Ouest, surtout où, où nous n'avons plus beaucoup de carnivores en liberté. Euh, les, les licaons, par exemple, sont vraiment menacés. Il ne reste que quelques populations résiduelles dans le parc du Nyokolokoba. Donc, nous appuyons fortement cette collaboration et nous encourageons la CMS à développer d'autres formes aussi de collaboration pour la sauvegarde d'autres espèces. Excepté notre réserve, donc euh, sur le paragraphe 31, euh, cette réunion, nous n'avons pas été invités à cette réunion et les décisions prises dans cette réunion euh, ne nous agréent pas. Donc, nous, nous appuyons... Euh, le collègue du Nigeria pour que ce paragraphe 31 soit enlevé du document. Merci. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Senegal. Cheetah Conservation Fund. Thank you, Chair. As this is the first time I take the floor, I would like to thank India for hosting the COP and their generous welcome. The Cheetah Conservation Fund fully supports the African Carnivores Initiative and the draft resolutions as included in the annexes, but we would like to uh, further support the amendments offered by the Scientific Committee as offered in uh, Addendum 1 and as the EU also supports. So we would like to clarify, Chair, when he said that there are no uh, um, objections to the draft resolutions, if that includes also the addendum and that would also be accepted. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Cheetah Conservation Found Fund. Yes, I confirm that uh, we are discussing both um, the document and addendum from the Scientific Council. So, yes, you are very right. Let's have a conservation force. Thank you, Chair. We, we welcome this, uh, this document and the annexed, uh, uh, and the annexes. Uh, in particular, we would like to refer to the intervention from the CITES Secretariat, uh, whereby CITES decided not to have a, a resolution at this time. It was thought to be premature, but to uh, go along with a series of decisions which matches practically the decisions which are before us here. And on this decision, we would like also to stress the importance to uh, open up the collaboration uh, on this initiative to all interested uh, stakeholders and experts, and to give uh, a lot of importance to the future program of work, because we understand that range states are, would like to test the effectiveness of this initiative, so they would like to to understand how this program of work will develop 
and uh, how it can uh, uh, help with the conservation and sustainable use of these species. On the intervention of uh, Nigeria Chair, uh, this was discussed yesterday in the terrestrial working group. I believe that uh, it could come up even this evening again. Uh, the Chair can report on this. And uh, it's, it's a not, not a problem, uh, Chair. CITES has endorsed the conclusion of the Sevilla workshop and being the African Carnivore Initiative, a common initiative between CMS and CITES, we believe that sh there should be a reciprocal endorsement. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Conservation First. I want to come back to the meeting. Do we have any proposed change in draft resolution in Annex 1? Um, and the decision is in Annex 2, 3, and 4. Because the paragraph, uh, the, 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 the paragraph 31 is not going to be agreed. It's not a decision. Uh, it's just a background document, and the, the concerns raised by Senegal and Nigeria have been fully noted and will be included in the proceedings of the meeting. So I come back to you on the draft resolution uh, and decisions. Do we have any uh, objections to adoption of the Annex 1, 2, 3, and 4? I haven't had any contrary view uh, to the adoption or any proposed amendments to the same. Do we have any objections to adoption of Annex 1, 2, 3, and four. I see none. I take it that uh, the Committee of the Whole uh, recommends this document, these documents uh, to the plenary for adoption. And of course, the comments uh, and concerns raised by Senegal and Nigeria have been uh, duly noted. Thank you very much. We shall move to. Uh, just to confirm uh, that uh, what has been uh, uh, adopted includes the recommendations of the Scientific Council, just to be uh, certain. I now invite the Secretary to introduce document 26.3.2 uh, on the conservation of the African Wild Earth Secretariat. Thank you, Chair. Document 26.3.2 reports on progress made to implement Resolution 12.18 and Decision 12.71 on the conservation of the African wild ass. With funding from the Government of Germany and in cooperation with the IUCN Equid Specialist Group, it was possible to implement two activities provided in the roadmap to conserve the African wild ass. These activities related to understanding the nutritional overlap of wild ass populations with livestock in Eritrea and in Ethiopia, and details on the findings are provided in the document before you. The Secretariat is awaiting permission from the government of Egypt for an expert to visit Alba National Park and assess the, the occurrence of Af African wild ass in Egypt. While continuing to support the range states with the implementation of the roadmap, the Secretariat proposes slight changes to Resolution 12.18, as well as the renewal of Decision 12.71, as contained in Annexes 1 and 2 of this document. The COP is invited to consider these changes. Thank you. Thank you, Secretariat. I now uh, open the floor for uh, brief comments on Document 26.3.2. I invite parties to make comments on document 26.3.2 as introduced by the Secretariat. I, okay, I recognize Ethiopia, please. Thank you, Chair. 
As it is my first time to take the floor, I would like to extend my deepest gratitude and appreciation to the Indian government for hosting this important conference and to the Secretariat for the wonderful work to organize the COP. Mr. Chair, the African wild ass is one of the most threatened mammals in the world, which is in the verge of extinction, mainly due to anthropogenic and uh, anthropogenic factors. The small populations are not only occurring in fragmented habitats, but also move across international boundaries in search of pasture and uh, water. Hence, creation of ecological connectivity and establishing transboundary conservation strategy that largely engages local community is the only option at the moment to ensure the survival of the species. Therefore, Ethiopia strongly supports the adoption of the um, amendment that enhance migratory species conservation of the critically endangered African wildlife. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ethiopia. I do not, Senegal. Monsieur le Président, bien que le Sénégal ne soit pas aire de répartition pour l'âne sauvage, nous appuyons fortement la résolution. Thank you very much, Senegal. I do not see any further requests for the floor, uh, neither do I see or hear any opposition um, to the proposed amendment to the resolution and renew of the decision. So I put it to you that uh, unless there is objection uh, that this uh, meeting adopts uh, the proposed uh, uh, amendment of the resolution and renew of the decision. Do you have any objections? I see none. I take it that uh, uh, the document is uh, recommended to the plenary for adoption. Thank you very much. Let me now invite the Secretary to introduce document 26.3.3 on the African Elephant Action Plan. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Secretariat would like to introduce document 26.3.3. This document reports on progress to implement Resolution 12.19, Endorsement of the African Elephant Action Plan. The document also contains draft decisions in the annex. During the intersessional period, the CMS Secretariat was accepted as an ex-official member of the African Elephant Fund Steering Committee in line with Resolution 12.19. The Secretariat attended all 13, three steering committee meetings held in 2017, 18, and 19. The Secretariat maintained communication with the national focal points regarding funding opportunities provided by the African Elephant Fund. This endorsement of the African Elephant Action Plan by COP12 led to an enhanced partnership and coordinated efforts among the CMS, CITES, and AEF secretariats for the conservation of the African elephant. Against this background, the document recommends that the signatories of the CMS West African Elephant MOU align their activities with the African Elephant Action Plan to enhance synergies with ongoing conservation actions. The Scientific Council reviewed the document and welcomed the proposed consolidated approach for, for the conservation of the African elephant. The Secretariat also would like to inform parties that it organized an informal meetings of the signatory of the West African Elephant MOU on this Monday to facilitate initial discussion among the signatories on the future directions of the MOU. The conference of the party is invited to consider draft decisions in consideration of comments from the Scientific Council as contained in the addendum. Thank you. Thank you, Secretariat. I now open the floor. I recognize UNEP. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, for allowing us to um, 
take the floor on this important agenda item related to the African Elephant Action Plan. We thought that parties, uh, and especially African Elephant Range states, would be interested in receiving a little bit more information related to the plan and to the African Elephant Fund. Uh, to provide a little bit of background on the African Elephant Action Plan, uh, it was at the 14th meeting of the Conference of Parties to CITES in 2007 that parties adopted decisions on the African elephant. Those decisions mandated the African elephant range states to develop, among other things, an African elephant action plan and subsequently an African elephant fund. At COP15, the parties adopted the African elephant action plan as a principal strategy to support the range states to conserve and protect the African elephant across its range. UNEP subsequently created a trust fund to serve as a tool to implement the African Elephant Action Plan, and a secretariat was set up to host and administer the African Elephant Fund. And this, is, this secretariat is governed by a steering committee, which is composed of donors and range state representatives. Since the adoption of the African Elephant Action Plan, uh, the trust fund has received funding from several donors, and a total of 62 projects have been initiated across 38 African and range states to support them in protecting and conserving the African elephant. These projects have contributed to reduced poaching, mitigation of human elephant conflicts, and restoration of elephant habitats, while enhancing cooperation among range states on conservation of cross-boundary populations. Mr. Chair, it's also important to note that discussions are currently ongoing among the range states for the revision of the African Elephant Action Plan. UNEP already convened two range states meetings in the margins of the CITES COP18 in August 2019 to discuss a way forward on the technical inputs prepared for review of the African Elephant Action Plan. During a CITES MIC meeting organized in Nairobi in November 2019, range states provided technical inputs and suggestions for the review and gave a mandate to the African Elephant Fund Steering Committee to oversee the revision exercise, which is scheduled to start in March at the 12th African Elephant Fund Steering Committee meeting in Uganda. The range states agreed to revise the African Elephant Action Plan, taking into account new emerging uh, trends and also gaps that might not have been taken into account in the first version of the African Elephant Action Plan. As a follow-up to the adoption of the CMS COP, and as mentioned by the CMS Secretariat, uh, CMS was welcomed as a new ex officio steering committee member, and the African Elephant Fund call for project proposals have been opened also to the CMS Elephant Range dates. With this chair, we fully support the recommendations made to the signatories of the Arrest African Elephant CMS MOU to align their activities with the African Elephant Action Plan as it will enhance synergies with ongoing conservation actions. This recommendation is already, to a certain extent, a reality on the ground. After consultation with the CITES Secretariat, I would like also to inform the range states that CITES welcomes the draft decision in the annex to the document and stands ready to assist the CMS Secretariat and the signatories of the West African MOU in their implementation. This would be done through the CITES program on monitoring the illegal killing of elephants. With this, Mr. Chair, UNEP stands ready to provide more details on the functioning and the operational modalities of the African Elephant Fund. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, UNEP, and uh, thank you for the support to African elephant conservation. Let me now take Senegal. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous saluons vraiment cette initiative heureuse du PNIE pour la création de ce fonds permettant le financement de plans d'action de l'éléphant d'Afrique. Comme vous le savez, l'éléphant fait partie de l'un des animaux les plus menacés au, en Afrique du point de vue euh, de son abattage clandestin. Et euh, conscient de cela, la CMS avait, créé, avait euh, approché les parties en 2005 pour euh, la mise en place d'un mémorandum d'accord pour la conservation de euh, l'éléphant d'Afrique de l'Ouest. Et ce mémorandum avait été payé, euh, signé par 13 pays. Euh, malheureusement, pour euh, manque de financement, ce, mé ce mémorandum n'a pas pu 
euh, produire les résultats escomptés. Donc nous sommes vraiment heureux de, ce, de cette initiative encore entre la CITES et euh, la CMS pour sauver un des animaux les plus emblématiques d'Afrique. Euh, Donc nous appuyons fortement cette euh, collaboration. Thank you very much, Senegal. I have had only uh, voices to support. So I now come back to you as the meeting. Do we have any objections to this meeting adopting decisions 13AA and 13BB uh, contained in annex to document 26.3.3? Uh, I see no objection. I take it that, uh, oh, I see Togo. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Euh, au niveau de l'alinéa paragraphe 9, euh, on voit bien que depuis que le mémorandum a été adopté, depuis 2015 et 2014, il y a une certaine léthargie, il y a très peu d'actions. Et si nous trouvons vraiment la pertinence de ce mécanisme, il va falloir qu'il y ait une disposition claire pour euh, la mobilisation des fonds afin de soutenir euh, ce mémorandum parce que euh, jusqu'ici, tel que c'est mentionné, il y a très peu d'activités. S'il n'y a pas de stratégie claire, je pense qu'avec le temps, euh, ce mémorandum et son mécanisme de fonctionnement ne sera plus efficace. Et donc je, je, je souhaite ce qui est que la conférence envisage la nécessité d'inclure un paragraphe qui prévoit comment on pense redynamiser ce mécanisme dans le futur. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Togo, are you proposing to amend the draft decisions? Do you have uh, a text you would like to add? Would you like to add a paragraph on the draft decisions? Oui, je pourrais faire une proposition, mais pas tout de suite, si vous le permettez. Okay, I will uh, uh, give you a chance to come up with the formulation and uh, submit it to the Secretariat. We can uh, then, uh, in that case, refer this to the terrestrial working group where that paragraph can be considered. Do you have any objection to referring this document to the working group then, given uh, Togo's intervention? UNEP, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, Juste pour euh, peut-être donner un peu de clarté à la, à la, à la résolution, euh, juste pour le, donner plus d'informations peut-être aux délégués qui viennent du Togo, le, la proposition qui est faite ici est vraiment d'utiliser euh, le plan d'action pour l'éléphant d'Afrique et le front que nous avons déjà, qui est donc administré par le programme des Nations Unies pour l'environnement, comme programme de travail pour le protocole d'accord qui a été signé. L'idée est donc... Euh, de passer du protocole d'accord au, euh, au, au fond, au fond directement. Donc nous avons déjà un mécanisme de financement qui est en place où nous avons des, euh, des propositions de projets qui sont déjà faites par les États de l'ère de répartition. Et donc ces propositions de projets viennent au PNUE et elles sont revues par le comité directeur pour pouvoir les approuver. Donc en matière de, 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 de mécanisme de financement, il y a déjà un mécanisme de financement qui est en place et donc, je voulais le, vous rendre cette idée de la, très claire au Togo pour qu'on puisse avoir une discussion avec le même niveau d'information. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, UNEP. Uh, Togo, UNEP is clarifying that actually there is already a funding mechanism under the Africa Elephant Fund. So, the mechanism already exists. With that clarification, I come back to you, Togo. Would you have any objection to adoption of the draft decisions? 
Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Peut-être le mentionner clairement parce que, pour moi, l'avenir de ce mécanisme dépend des fonds. Mais s'il peut y avoir une, une ligne qui l'explicite clairement, on sera confiant que ce mémorandum aura de l'avenir. All right. It appears that um, Togo uh, still has uh, um, concerns and they would wish to see some more uh, decisions on, on, on the funding arrangements in the interest of time. Since we can't uh, go into detailed discussion, I propose that uh, we refer this matter further to the terrestrial working group. Uh, so that they can have further discussion and com conclude it. Do we have any objection to that approach? I see none. Uh, uh, let's refer this to the uh, working group for finalization. So Togo kindly uh, submit the proposed text you would want added to the Secretariat so that it can be uh, considered in the working group. Uh, also to remind uh, other delegates, if you have any changes you would wish to make on the documents, uh, whether we've discussed them here or not, feel free to forward the uh, comments to the Secretariat to enable uh, interpretation uh, and also uh, advanced consideration so that by the time we discuss them they are already processed. So we shall move to agenda item 26.3.4 uh, Sahero Saharan Megafauna. Let me invite the Secretariat to introduce document 26.3.4. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Secretariat would like to introduce two documents related to the Sahelo-Saharan megafauna, document 26.3.4 and document 28.2.4, if that's acceptable to you, Mr. Chair. Okay. So parties are invited to read the two documents together as these documents are complementary. Document 26.3.4, reports on progress to implement resolution 9.21, Rev. COP 12, Sahelo Sahara Megafauna. The document also contains proposed amendments to the resolution in Annex 1 and the draft decision in Annex 2. The proposed amendments to the resolution include a reference to an ecosystem approach and the United Nations Decade on Ecosystem Restoration 2021 to 2030. The draft decision is a transfer of operative paragraph 4 of resolution 9.21 RevCOP 12 into a decision in accordance with resolution 11.6 RevCOP 12 review of decisions because this is a time-bound activity. Document 28.2.4 is the proposal for the continuation of the Sahelo Sahara Megafauna concerted action. The concerted action was first established in 1994. Six species have been covered under the concerted action. Building on the experience since 1994, the proposal recommends the inclusion of two additional species listed on the CMS appendices in the sahelo saharan megafauna concerted action, the red-fronted gazelle and the Barbary sheep. The proposed activities are presented in Table 1 of the proposal. The Scientific Council reviewed document 26.3.4 and made a specific comment on the wording of draft decision 13.AA as contained in the addendum. On the proposal for the continuation of the concerted action, 
the Scientific Council made two specific comments as included in the addendum. Regarding the status of the Barbary ship pointed out by the Scientific Council, the Secretariat would like to inform parties that the IUCN Caprina Specialist Group clarified that indeed the last red list assessment of this species was from 2008 and that the reassessment is currently being undertaken. The Conference of the Parties is invited to consider the amendments to Resolution 9.21, REVCOP 12, and the draft decision as contained in Document 26.3.4 in consideration of the comments from the Scientific Council. In addition, the Conference of the Parties is invited to decide on the acceptance or rejection of the proposal for the continuation of the Sahelo-Sahara megafauna concerted action as presented in document 28.2.4. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Secretariat. I invite distinguished delegates to make comments on document 26.3.4 and document 28.2.4. I recognize the European Union. Thank you, Chair. The EU and its member states support the adoption of the proposed amendments to Resolution 9.21 with a small addition in preambular part. And I, pol I apologize, uh, Chair, I am now talking about the document 26.3.4 on Sahelo-Saharan megafauna. Uh, the EU and its member states also support the adoption of the draft decision with some minor changes. Uh, we will submit the proposed changes in writing and I would just like to ask if, you, uh, if may, I may read the proposed changes now or should I just submit them in writing? I would suggest you submit them in writing since we shall have a detailed discussion in the working group. Uh, given that we have comments. Okay, thank you, Chair. And also uh, regarding the agenda item 28.2.4 on continuation of concerted actions, uh, we feel the Sahel of Sahara and Megaphone Initiative and concerted actions associated with it proved to be a strong and effective conservation tool for the past 25 years. Therefore, the EU and its member states welcome and support continuation of concerted actions and all activities related to conservation of Sahelo-Saharan megafauna. Furthermore, EU and its member states welcome conservation activities aligned with an ecosystem approach, aiming to maintain or restore habitats for the Sahelo-Saharan megafauna and their implementation in a revised action plan through cross-sectoral coordination. This approach will contribute not solely to the species and habitat conservation, but to the UN decade of ecosystem restoration as well. In addition, the EU and its member states would like to suggest that NGOs already acting on this issue be involved in activity four, strengthen partnership with relevant international and regional organizations and multilateral environmental agreements. Finally, the EU and its member states would like to highlight that the insecurity which is increasing in the whole sahel saharan area should be mentioned as a major risk in section likelihood of success. Uh, we have some minor additions which we will also submit in writing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, EU. Uh, let's take United Arab Emirates. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we have a brief comment on document 28.2.4, and uh, we will be submitting it in written. Thank you. Thank you, UAE. Let's have Senegal. Uh, merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, nous appuyons fortement cette résolution et la continuation des actions concertées pour uh, ces espèces, euh, parce que euh, l'outil d'action concerté a beaucoup euh, contribué à la conservation des espèces sahélo-sahériennes et le Sénégal, dans sa politique de restauration de ses habitats, euh, mise beaucoup sur euh, 
cette action concertée, ces actions concertées pour euh, le repeuplement de ces zones euh, désertiques euh, où certaines espèces sahélo-sahéliennes avaient complètement disparu, mais grâce à ces actions de concertation, à ces actions concertées, a pu vraiment faire le, le repeuplement au niveau de euh, des zones nord du, du pays où certaines espèces avaient complètement disparu. Donc, nous appuyons fortement la résolution pour la continuation de ces actions. Merci. Thank you very much, uh, Senegal. I will propose that uh, we refer um, the document 26.3.4 and 28.2.4 to the Terrestrial Working Group for further Uh, processing and finalization. I see no objection, uh, so Terrestrial Working Group, uh, please handle as appropriate. Let me now invite the Secretary to introduce document 26.3.5 on Central Asian Mammals Initiative. Thank you, Chair. So document 26.3.5 reports on the progress made to implement resolution 11.24 on the Central Asian Mammals Initiative and its associated program of work 2014 to 2020. The document contains two annexes, resolution 11.24 with proposed amendments taking into account, for instance, the proposal to cover additional species, namely the Gobi bear, Persian leopard and the Uriel as well as the new program of work covering the period 2021 to 2026 in Annex 2. The revised resolution and the new program of work were developed during a range states meeting funded by the government of Germany and hosted by the government of Mongolia in September 2019 in Ulaanbaatar. The Scientific Council made two specific comments on the document, one on preambular paragraph 2 of the resolution and one on activity 10.2 in the proposed new program of work relating to Asiatic cheetah. The conference of the parties is requested to adopt resolution 11.24 with proposed amendments and the program of work in its annex. Thank you very much, uh, Secretariat. I now invite uh, comments on the document. I recognize Mongolia. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Mongolia would like to address on behalf of CMS member and branch states those participate to the second meeting of signatories of Central Asian Mammal Initiative. Mongolia hosted the second meeting of the initiative in September 2019 as part of the Central and Northeast Asian Wildlife Week event with the support of German government, UK government and also the CMS Secretariat. Uh, taking this opportunity, the, uh, on behalf of the government of Mongolia, a Mongolian delegate wished to express appreciation to, uh, to German government and UK government, WWF and WCS and also national stakeholders for their support to organize it <coughs> successfully. The Wildlife Week focused on illegal wildlife trade, wildlife disease, and also CAMI countries agreed to have joint sentiment aiming to strengthen sub-regional and transboundary cooperation. Considering the importance of international cooperation to implement each country's Con uh, conservation actions, Mongolia reassures its continuing role to establish sub-regional wildlife sustainable conservation mechanism, which the government uh, committed at the London um, Illegal Wildlife Conference in 2018. So let me back to the CAMI. Uh, the work program, uh, the program of the work from 2021 to 2026 is developed with the key priorities and also it concern with, uh, is uh, in line with cross-cutting uh, sectors and then also uh, thankfully committed by the countries to maximize the efforts to achieve full implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Mongolia, European Union. Thank you, Chair. 
the European Union, Union and its Member States support adoption of the proposed amendments to Resolution 11.24 with certain minor changes and support the adoption of the Programme of Work from 2021 to 2026. Regarding the work plan, we feel that it could benefit if it would also include estimation of costs for each of the actions identified in order that potential donors have a better vision of what they could support. The EU and its member states will submit the proposed changes in writing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, EU. Uh, United Kingdom. Thank you, Chair. The United Kingdom welcomes the continued success of the Central Asian Mammals Initiative and would like to congratulate participants on the success of the meeting of Kami Range States held during the Central and Northeast Asian Wildlife Week in Ulaanbaatar in September 2019. It was a great pleasure for the UK to be invited to attend and support Wildlife Week, which sought to build transboundary cooperation on matters of critical importance to the conservation of iconic wildlife across the region. Having participated in Wildlife Week and seen the challenges facing the region, we support the renewal of CAMI's work through amendment of Resolution 11.24. We welcome the Programme of Work for 2021 to 2026, developed and agreed at the Kami Range State Meeting. This ambitious Programme of Work, which includes measures to further community engagement, increase capacity development, and tackle the illegal wildlife trade, is a clear demonstration of regional commitments to transboundary cooperation on issues of vital concern to species conservation. We note the generous financial support to CAMI from the governments of Germany and Switzerland and suggest, as already noted, that it will be helpful for potential donors if activities within the work program could be costed. Furthermore, it might be helpful for parties if the CAMI chair identified those initiatives within this work program where parties, partner organisations and private sector actors could most usefully provide in-kind resources to support their implementation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, UK. Let's take Switzerland. Thank you, Chair. Switzerland would like to congratulate the 14 range states of the Central Asian Mammals Initiative, CAMI, for the prog progress made since the start of this important initiative back in 2014 in COP11 in Quito. Since we have been following and supporting CAMI across the past two trienniums, we can really judge how far we have come, and we hope that this COP will be deciding on supporting the work plan for 2021 to 2026. Switzerland fully agrees with the amendments to Resolution 11.24 as they are prepared by the Secretariat and proposed by the CAMI range states. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Switzerland. Let's have Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is taking the floor for the first time, not taking into account the misunderstandings that happened yesterday morning. On behalf of the Republic of Uzbekistan, I would like to thank the government of India and state of Gujarat for their hospitality and for providing this spectacular venue. And I uh, would like to congratulate uh, Ms. Amy Frankel uh, with the uh, appointment. The Central Asian Mammals Initiative has been developed under CMS and has started its fruitful work in 2014 and is a great example for cooperation and connecting neighboring countries beyond borders for the purpose of managing and conservation of migratory mammals. The best example of the <clears throat> important work under CAMI, as well as the uh, MOU for the conservation of saiga antelopes, is the work to modify the fences in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan to maintain saiga migration between two countries. Mitigating the impacts of linear inf infrastructure is a great priority under CAMI and has resulted in a number of important developments and products such as the Migration and infra Infrastructure Atlas. CAMI and the SAIGA MOU provide a good platform for cooperation among Central Asian countries and support in our efforts to conserve the species. We would like to take the opportunity and thank the government of Switzerland and Germany for their financial support 
which, which help the Secretariat to make significant uh, process in, uh, progress in implementing the initiative. We say for <coughs> fully support the uh, document and the program of the work and look forward to continue our cooperation under this initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Uzbekistan. Um, I will take uh, Wildlife Conservation Society. Thank you, Chair. And thank you very much to the EU, UK, Switzerland, Mongolia, and Uzbekistan for their interventions. The CAMI initiative is indeed highly successful and a great model that we hope can be extended to other, other regions. WCS was pleased to work with the CAMI range states and the CMS Secretariat on several projects under the previous program of work, most recently the Central Asian Mammals Migration and Linear Infrastructure Atlas. We strongly support continued work on additional modules for a global atlas on animal migration, and we believe this information should be aggregated and provided to decision makers. It's extremely useful and important. We note that data collection and presentation is only, are only as useful as their provision to decision makers, and strategic planning for maximizing the value of such efforts is critical. We congratulate the CAMI range states for their efforts to take management actions based on the CAMI atlas and the CAMI process. For example, WCS and in addition, WCS Mongolia, our staff in Mongolia, were very pleased to have assisted with and attended the September 2019 CAMI meeting that has been mentioned uh, by Mongolia and others. We recommend that parties adopt the proposed amendments in Resolution 11 point, to 11.24 in Annex 1 of this document and the program of work, as we've heard from all interventions. We note the comment from the Scientific Council that the program of work is ambitious, we agree, and would benefit from prioritization. Among the activities of the program of work, we recommend a continued focus on upstream elements of planning and mitigating the impacts of linear infrastructure in particular, as well as managing the wildlife, livestock, human health interface, as these are critical conservation challenges in this region. We look forward to future collaborative efforts on the next program of work through and on all collaboration with CAMI range states. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, WCS, Young Naturalists Network. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Young Naturalist Network is supporting the document. Thank you all. I propose that we refer uh, this document to the working group for finalization um, and uh, request that uh, those with the comments, uh, especially EU, uh, to make them available as soon as possible so that the document can be finalized by the working group. We shall now start the program for today. Uh, all along we've been uh, dealing with the uh, uh, backlog so we are now going to start our program. Um, we shall now move to agenda item 29. We can skip the report of the Credentials Committee. Credentials Committee already reported yesterday. I do not think they have any update. We can uh, uh, hear from them tomorrow if uh, they are new credentials that have been uh, uh, considered. So let's move to 20. Uh, I invite the Secretary to introduce document 20 on national reports. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Secretariat would like to introduce document 20, which reports on national reports submitted to the Conference of the Parties. As instructed by Decision 12.4, the new template was prepared by an informal working group and adopted by the 48th meeting of the Standing Committee. The document also puts forward a decision for consideration of the Conference of the Parties to guide future work in case a revision of the template is deemed necessary. 
The Secretariat would like to highlight that in some instances, the data provided by national reports were insufficient to complete other tasks dependent on such information, such as assessing progress in the implementation of the program of work on climate change and migratory species, or legislation implementing Articles 3, 4, A, and B. Parties may also wish to consider a strengthening the formulation of some questions to better reflect the reality in their countries and regions. As of February 22, actually this morning, we received the last uh, national report. Um, it sums up 95 national reports have been submitted to the COP, the highest number of submissions ever. The analysis has been possible thanks to the voluntary contributions of Switzerland and Germany. With your permission, Mr. Chair, a representative from WCMC will present the main findings and lessons learned from the national reports submitted by parties. Thank you, Chair. WCMC. Thank you very much. This presentation will summarize briefly some of the key findings from the analysis of national reports, focusing in particular on the main successes reported by parties, the major threats to migratory species, the impact these are having, and the difficulties parties reported in implementing the Convention. The format of the national report was revised in 2018 and now closely aligns with the Strategic Plan for Migratory Species, providing information to help assess progress towards each of the 16 global targets included in the plan. The new template was used for the first time in this round of reporting and the results will provide a baseline for assessing trends in future analyses. National reports were received from 79 parties in time to be included in the analysis. Since then, 16 additional reports have been received, representing nearly three quarters of the parties to CMS. All of the national reports are available on the CMS website and provide an invaluable resource for all stakeholders. And we encourage everyone to consider the multiple ways in which this information could be used. The national reports indicated that progress is being made in a number of areas. In particular, parties are working to enhance policy frameworks, to improve knowledge and to raise awareness, and to promote cooperation between countries and across sectors. Measures for protecting sites, as well as managing and restoring habitats were the most reported, common, uh, commonly reported successful conservation action. A few examples of other successes included the development of national species red lists and the implementation of action plans for migratory species. And finally, 59 parties reported that they now prohibit the take of all Appendix 1 species in their country. Despite notable progress being made, however, there are also areas where more action is needed. In particular, parties reported that the range of threats and pressures are having a severe negative impact on migratory species. The main threats were reported to be habitat loss and degradation, and these were also the pressures that were most commonly ranked as severe and as showing significant negative trends. Other key threats highlighted in the report included illegal hunting, climate change, and bycatch. Parties were also asked to report any major changes in conservation status of CMS species in their country. And while positive trends were reported for some species, mainly for terrestrial and aquatic mammals, the major trends reported for bats, birds, and fish were more negative. However, this is just a snapshot of major changes, and a more systematic assessment could provide a clearer picture as to whether migratory species are truly improving or deteriorating. The most commonly reported barriers to effective implementation were insufficient resources and capacity, 
and in their national reports, parties emphasise the extent to which this is hindering their efforts to conserve migratory species. Other key areas where support was reported to be needed included technical and scientific support and exchanges of information. So, in conclusion, positive action is being taken, but there is still more work to be done to safeguard migratory species, including ensuring all CMS parties prohibit the take in Appendix 1 species, a continued focus on addressing habitat loss and degradation and the other key threats to migratory species, and increased support and coordination amongst CMS stakeholders to fulfill the ambitions of the Convention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretariat and WCMC. I now invite uh, distinguished delegates to discuss document 20 uh, together with its annexes, Annex 1 and Annex 2. I recognize Yemen. Yemen, you have the floor. Oh, sorry, it's, it's Brazil, actually, it's not Yemen. <laughs> okay. Um, we would thank the Secretariat for analyzing the national reports, and we would like to state that we will support the inclusion in the budget of the necessary resources for the analysis of national reports, as stated in the activities of Scenario 4 of the budget. Uh, the national report must be the main form of gathering information from the parties. Additional questionnaires should be avoided because they create a heavy burden on technical staff, usually are answered by a very limited number of parties, and many times are incomplete and duplicate efforts from the many environmental multilateral organizations. We will send to the Secretariat a suggestion of new text for decision 13.AA reflecting uh, the importance of having these resources uh, in the core budget. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. The European Union. Thank you, Chair. The European Union and its member states thank the Secretariat for the analysis of CMS National Reports to COP13 contained in Annex 2. We support the deletion of decisions 12.4 and 12.5. We also support the adoption of the draft decisions contained in Annex 1. However, having in mind that the synthesis report recognized the gaps in current reporting format, we are of opinion that revision of the reporting format needs to be done in the intercessional period. Additionally, we suggest that this revision should further consider strengthening of the synergies within the CMS family and with reporting processes of other multilateral environmental agreements. The EU and its member states will submit the proposed changes in writing. Thank you. Thank you very much, EU. Do you have any further requests for the floor? I see none. Um, we shall wait to get uh, a proposed revision from EU and then uh, we shall look at uh, the revised uh, uh, decisions with the inclusion of uh, proposed EU comments. Thank you very much. Let me now invite the Secretariat to introduce document 21 on application of Article 3 of the Convention. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Secretariat would like to introduce Document 21, which has been prepared due to several reports of CMS parties having engaged in international trade in CMS Appendix 1 species. The document was developed in close cooperation with the Secretariat. This document foresees efforts to better understand the extent of such incidents, parties to examine their national legislation on this topic and take steps to address such occurrences, 
and that the relevant information is made available to assist parties to raise awareness and build capacity. Addendum 1 to this document contains the comments from the Scientific Council. Considering that the prevalence of such incidents and the potential impacts on CMS-listed species are not known, the Scientific Council requested the Secretariat to conduct a preliminary assessment of the scale of the issue, which has been presented under Information Document 37. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Secretariat. I invite comments on Document 21. European Union, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. I speak on behalf of the EU and its member states. The resolution in its current form does not provide a clear analysis of whether or not, and if so, under which circumstances, the export, the introduction from the sea, or import of an Appendix 1 species contravenes the Convention. The lack of clarity in the proposed resolution on this crucial point is unfortunate because it is a serious matter of legality or illegality under international law. We welcome the recently available info document number 37 containing the analysis undertaken by the Secretariat of CITES Trade Data about the international trade of CMS Appendix 1 listed species. We agree with the Secretariat that this is a good starting point, but that the further research and more in-depth factual and legal analysis of these issues is needed, with a detailed focus on effective implementation of the Convention. At this stage, we are not inclined to supporting a resolution as it is proposed, but would support a decision that mandates the Secretariat to undertake further analysis on the matter and provide recommendations or draft decisions as appropriate for parties to consider at COP14. Additionally, we propose that the Secretariat liaise with the CITES Secretariat and, as proposed by the Scientific Council, prepare and publish on the CMS website a list of species included on CMS Appendix 1, which are not listed on CITES Appendix 1 for parties' information. We are proposing to amend the draft decision accordingly and will provide the proposal in writing. Thank you. Thank you, EU. Let's hear from the United Kingdom. Thank you, Chair. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Secretariat for preparing this paper and for drawing parties' attention to this matter. We've carefully considered the information provided in Document 21, as well as the analysis of CITES trade data undertaken by the CMS Secretariat provided in Information Document 37. It is our view that whilst this is a helpful first step, it serves to highlight that this issue is not straightforward and clearly demonstrates significant gaps in our understanding of the full nature of trade in CMS Appendix 1 listed species. There are a number of areas where, in our view, greater clarity is needed. We have undertaken a brief examination of the data as presented in InfDoc 37 relating to the UK. This demonstrates the complexities involved in interpreting trade data and the risk of making assumptions about the circumstances in which specimens in trade have been taken from the wild without a more detailed analysis. For instance, the data as presented doesn't include reference to the dates when take from the wild actually occurred which may have been prior to the species listing in CMS Appendix 1. Moreover, some of the trade data relates to the non-lethal take of specimens, which is permissible under CITES, for instance, the trade in vicuña hair and fiber. Critically, the information presented does not provide sufficient clarity with regards to whether and under which circumstances the export or import of a CMS Appendix 1 species is in contravention of the party's obligations under the Convention. Without such clarity, the United Kingdom cannot support the draft resolution. It is our view that it would be more appropriate to undertake intercessional discussions between relevant parties, the Secretariat and the CITES Secretariat, with a view to clarifying the data, the nature and the scale of the issues and ensuring effective implementation of the Convention. 
we suggest that the Secretariat then return to the next conference of the parties with a more robust consideration of this issue, along with any recommendations or decisions as appropriate for parties to consider. We support amendments to the draft decisions to this effect. We also agree with the recommendation of the Scientific Council requesting the Secretariat to liaise with the CITES Secretariat and publish on the CMS website a list of species included on CMS Appendix 1, which are also listed on CITES Appendix 2 or 3. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, UK. Let's take South Africa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. South Africa welcomes with appreciation the work done by the Secretariat in this agenda item. However, South Africa has the following submission. For example, in its preamble, uh, the document recognizes that commercial utilization is a threat to, ma uh, to many species in Appendix 1 of the Convention. However, should it, be, it should be noted that it is not always the threat. It can offer conservation benefits when undertaken sustainably. So the, uh, recognizing in Operation Paragraph 1 that there is a difference between taking and international trade. Recognize in Operation Paragraph 1 that require, requirements to prohibition the taking of Appendix 1 species only applies if none of the grounds of ex exceptions are satisfied. Possible deletion of the wording uh, in relation to parties reporting on imports and exports, since this is already undertaken by CITES for CITES listed species. Possible request that uh, Secretariat to develop more detailed uh, guidance on the exemptions permitted by Article 3.5, including on the scope of sustainable commercial utilization under this provision and present just to, for adoption by the next COP, rather than simply mandating the Secretary to advise parties on what constitute adequate legislation when the parties themselves have not yet endorsed guidance for interpreting uh, what is adequate in the context of Article 3.5. South Africa will be submitting comments on the document for consideration now. Thank you. Thank you, South Africa. Let's take Australia. Thank you, Chair. Australia appreciates that there are certain species included in Appendix 1 of the CMS that are also included on Appendix 2 of CITES, where trade of the species is regulated. While we appreciate the Secretariat's attempts to address this matter, and certainly appreciate the, the level of work that has gone into preparing the INFDOC 37, we believe that the issue requires further consideration before a resolution can be agreed. For example, the current draft resolution states that the import or export of an Appendix 1 listed species contravenes the obligations associated with Article 3, Paragraph 5 of the Convention. Unfortunately, this subject has not been discussed by parties previously, and we understand that the Vienna Convention on Law of Treaties provides that treaties need to be interpreted in good faith in accordance with their ordinary meaning in their context and in light of their object and purpose. In light of the definition of taking provided in the CMS, an ordinary meaning of the term would not appear to encompass the import and export of endangered migratory species. We also have concerns that references in the proposed resolution and decision potentially expand the meaning of taking in an inconsistent manner with the interpretation outlined in Article 1 paragraph 1, subparagraph I of the Convention. Australia would be happy to share our concerns further if discussion on this matter continues. Thank you. Thank you, Australia. Let's take Israel. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Um, we too would like to really commend the Secretary for preparing this document and highlighting this important issue. Um, we will start with where we agree, which is on the um, Scientific Council's suggestion to prepare better information on the website about cross-listing or, or listing by species both in the uh, Appendix 1 of the CMS and Appendix 2 and 3 of CITES. However, we would like very much to support at this time and at this COP meeting um, the drafting or the passing of a resolution on this issue and not to postpone it 
for another three years, as was suggested by EU, UK, and, and others. We believe that application of Article 3 of the Convention regarding international trade in Appendix 1 listed species is a critical issue and has been pointed out by the Secretariat. The way that the draft resolution is worded maybe goes a little too far, and we would concur that there are needed amendments to this resolution, and we would hope that if we can propose language to make the resolution a little more in line with um, what's known about this phenomenon at this stage, we can bring some of the other parties that objected on board to actually pass a resolution and not just to push it off with a decision to do a study for another three years. Um, we have suggested some text on, a, on the draft resolution that we feel would be acceptable to other parties, and uh, we would seek your recommendations how you would like us to go ahead with presenting this or perhaps as a uh, drafting group or to read our suggestions. Uh, Chair, what would you suggest? We would have um, a contact group on this issue uh, that will further process different views and come back to us with uh, uh, what would appear to be uh, the mutually beneficial way forward. Yes, uh, in that case, uh, Chair, we'll, we'll uh, reserve our, our specific recommendations at this time to save time and we'll bring it up at the contact group, which we would very much be uh, request to be part of. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Israel. Let's have Peru. El Perú también desea apoyar este documento en la aprobación del proyecto de resolución que figura en el anexo 1 del presente documento y también en adoptar los proyectos de decisiones que figuran en el anexo 2. Este documento invita a las partes a que desarrollen y apliquen legislaciones nacionales y medidas de cumplimiento, prohíban las actividades que conllevan la importación o exportación de las especies que figuran en el apéndice 1 y que infringen las normas de la Convención y, por tanto, minan sus objetivos. Y también este, insta a que aporten información a la Secretaría acerca de la importación y exportación de las especies de apéndice 1 de manera periódica, de tal manera que pueda haber un registro este, más real. Asimismo, Se solicita a la Secretaría que difunda entre las partes información sobre la importación y la exportación ¿no? de las especies de las que estoy mencionando, del apéndice 1, y que desarrolle una lista de especies que figuren tanto en el apéndice 1 de la Convención de CMS, pero también en el apéndice 2 de las CITES. Y las publique en su sitio web y las revise y vuelva a publicar si fuese necesario. Es muy importante para nosotros tener una claridad de qué especies que están en el apéndice 1 de CMS están siendo objeto de comercio en las CITES. Y también espero, al igual que el país de Israel, que se apruebe en esta copia este, este documento. Gracias. Thank you, Peru. Let's take New Zealand. Thank you, Chair. New Zealand thanks the Secretariat for raising this important issue and for the analysis covered in Information Paper 37. New Zealand agrees with others that the export, the import and export of species listed on Appendix 1 of CMS has potential to undermine the Convention. However, we too have some concerns, as highlighted by previous speakers. New Zealand supports further work on this issue in the intersessional period, and we're happy to contribute further to drafting of a, of a resolution and or decision. We'd like to be part of a contact group. Thank you. Thank you, New Zealand. Let's have Zimbabwe, followed by Norway. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, Zimbabwe shares the same, same sentiments as expressed by New Zealand. We believe that uh, procrastination will not uh, make a difference for the species that we seek to conserve and protect. And uh, we strongly believe that this is a very important matter which needs uh, further discussion um, during this COP and perhaps come up with a resolution. And um, 
there's work that we need to do in the intersectional period, uh, not to wait for the next COP. Thank you very much, Chair. And Zimbabwe will be interested in joining the contact group for this important subject matter. Nori. Thank you very much, Chair. I would like to also to echo what has been presented by several of the other interventions. Uh, this is in, indeed a, a, a new area for uh, CMS and maybe uh, uh, on high time to, to, to put and shed light on this issue. I think it's, it's uh, the, the, the trade in Appendix 1 species is just an example and I'm not to be focused you know, too much on but it clearly shows us that we, we need to look at the requirements of the convention. Maybe there are other uh, issues as well. And therefore, <coughs> we also need to look at uh, things like, like definitions. And we need to look at the national legislation program uh, on guidance, assisting, assisting of, of parties. So uh, we would like to support what has been suggested, as this is... I can testify that this is a rather complex issue which we discussed last autumn in, in November and probably not something we can solve in, in a few or in a short time. So an intersessional working group would be probably the best and uh, reverting back to the uh, standing committee. Thank you. Thank you, Nore. Let's take CITES. Thank you, Mr. Chair. CITES and CMS share common origins, have complementary mandates, and enjoy long-standing and deep programmatic collaboration reflected in joint multi-annual work plans since 2005. The cross-border aspects of CITES and CMS is why both conventions rely upon strong international cooperation coupled with strong and effective domestic action. At CITES COP18, 183 parties to our convention again broadly endorsed and recognized this good and constructive collaboration between the two conventions. And for a number of important joint species, COP18 adopted new specific measures explicitly directed to both CMS and CITES and calling for collaborative implementation. At the same time, the criteria for the inclusion of species in the appendices of CITES and CMS are different which explains why the species listed on the CMS and CMS and CITES are not automatically provided the same level of protection under both instruments. The conservation and management measures under both conventions, while complementary, may also be different, including in relation to trade resulting from the capture, hunting or fishing of listed species. The CITES Secretariat is generally of the view that the principal objectives and scope of CMS are not related to international trade. CMS Article 3 provides that parties that are range states of a migratory species listed in Appendix 1 prohibit the taking of animals belonging to, to, to such species, with four exceptions that do not mention national or international trade. Article 3, Paragraph 5, only applies to range states of the species, whereas, for example, in this proposed resolution in the document, uh, there is mention of imports, which may imply obligations beyond this national jurisdiction. The proposed resolution, for example, in its fifth preamble paragraph, seems not to recognize that well-managed and well-controlled international trade in situs the species has a track record of contributing to the conservation of the species, including for species that are listed in CMS Appendix 1, such as the Vicuña. The text does not well reflect that import or export of situs listed species that are also included in CMS appendices may not necessarily involve the take of such species in violation of CMS provisions, or that imported or exported animal species may originate from captive breeding, ranching, or agriculture facilities, and again would not be relevant to the concerns raised in this draft resolution. As the title of the draft resolution in the document suggests, its main intention seems to remind parts of CMS of their obligations regarding the application of Article 3 for Appendix 1 listed species, but this should be based on a common understanding of these obligations. We are not convinced of the need of, for a resolution that focuses solely on the import and export of such species. We would, however, support decisions directed to the CMS Secretary to collect information on the take of CMS append of Appendix 1 listed species 
and to examine apparent violations of the relevant provisions in Article 3, in line with the comments from the European Union, United Kingdom, Australia, and others. The CSITA Secretary stands ready to assist the CMS Secretary to the extent possible in this undertaking. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, CITES. Let's have WCS. Thank you, Chair. And this intervention is being made on behalf of NRDC, the International Environmental Law Project, Defenders of Wildlife, and WCS. Our, our organizations generally support the draft resolution in Annex 1 and the draft decisions, including amendments proposed by the Scientific Council. We greatly look forward to seeing those amendments that were mentioned by the delegate from Israel and hope that the any disagreement can be resolved and we can, the parties can come to agreement on, on text. We consider the effective implementation of Article 3 to be a critical element of CMS implementation. And CMS needs to provide clarity to parties how to effectively implement Article 3, including, when appropriate, the preventing the international trade of, of specimens of CMS Appendix 1 listed species coming from the wild. International trade, however, is only part of a broader discussion on how to improve the implementation of Article 3. CITES doesn't regulate take, for example, and it's absolutely critical that CMS parties look at this, though certainly they're related. You can't export an Appendix 1 species removed from the wild without taking it from the wild. There are related discussions on how to adopt regulations and legislation found in Document 22 and an ongoing debate on exceptions provided for the take of species on Appendix 1. We urge the parties to adopt a resolution and decisions at this COP. As Israel said, let's not let this linger for three years, though three and a half years till the next COP, though we do agree it would be useful to have a contact group and indeed potentially an intercessional working group uh, on how to improve implementation of Article 3 in both on international trade but also in particular on take of CMS Appendix 1 listed species. And we look forward if, to uh, engaging and participating in the contact group that is established. Thank you very much. Thank you, WCS. Let's take Senegal. Uh, merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Uh, je viens dans le même siège que l'orateur précédent par rapport à l'article la, 3, qui est l'essence même de la Convention sur les espèces migratrices. Je pense qu'aujourd'hui, au niveau du Sénégal, notre législation nationale est en train d'être actualisée et on, a, on est en train de prendre en compte euh, les annexes de la CMS et de la CITES dans notre législation nationale. Je pense qu'une clarification de cet article par rapport à son utilisation euh, et doit être faite dans le plus bref, plus, plus bref délai pour quand même qu'on puisse ne pas avoir des confusions dans l'application de cet article. Merci. Thank you very much, Senegal. I want to propose, um, uh, given the complexity and uh, sensitivity of, uh, of this issue, um, that we set up a contact group, as indeed uh, uh, expressed by several delegates. I want to suggest um, that uh, New Zealand you chair that uh, contact group and uh, all interested the parties and the NGOs can participate uh, in the discussion. Let's make it as uh, broad the discussion as possible so that uh, all interests can be, uh, can be considered. So New Zealand um, take the lead on uh, the discussion of this issue and uh, get back to us uh, with a solution that is agreed by all, uh, all parties and uh, as much as possible, all delegates. So you have a tall order, but I know you will deliver it. Is that acceptable to the, uh, the rest of the delegates? I see nods, so uh, New Zealand kindly take lead uh, of the contact group and uh, revert to us with uh, 
a mutually agreeable position. Of course, uh, parties that have expressed interest uh, do participate in the contact group. New Zealand. Chair, thank you, Chair. New Zealand is happy to facilitate a contact group on this issue. If the Secretariat could please advise us on an available room and appropriate timing, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Let me invite the Secretariat to write away, uh, propose uh, the logistical arrangement for this working group, given that it doesn't have to clash with the other existing groups. Secretariat. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we are finding out the room, and we will inform the, the plenary in, um, this morning. Um, if there is any advice, whether you prefer to meet at lunchtime or afternoon, please let us know. I think lunchtime there is budget already, so we should be looking at uh, some other time other than lunchtime. Zimbabwe, you want the floor? Kindly take the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. We thought probably we would benefit from uh, um, getting an indication of who is interested in the conduct group that is be led by New Zealand so that it's easier even on part of the Secretariat to uh, communicate with the interested parties, um, IGOs, NGOs, um, on communication so that they can streamline the mailing list. Thank you. Okay, uh, I will do just that. Uh, there is a proposal to have the contact group sit uh, concurrently with the budget committee at lunch time. Do you have any objection to having the two uh, sit concurrently at lunch time? Israel. Uh, thank you, Chair. I realize that there's always going to be some conflict, but lunchtime today would not be uh, appropriate for us as a small delegation with only one person. Um, it's, we would prefer it in the evening, if possible, please. New Zealand. Thank you, Chair. Could I please request that the timing doesn't clash with the Aquatic Working Group? We are a small delegation and we'll need to be attending that. Thank you. Okay, let me first take uh, the request from Zimbabwe to know um, who is interested in uh, participating in the contact group. Uh, Press your request for the floor as an indication that you will participate in the working group, rather the contact group. I think it's about 25, uh, quite a big number, 25, so we could uh, open it, I think, so that it is an open-ended uh, working group since uh, almost everyone is interested. Uh, let's, make it, let's make it open. So the, the, the Secretariat will communicate to everybody on the... Uh, the room. The time is still a problem. Uh, we have a clash. But let's make a choice. 
let's make a choice between lunchtime and evening. Uh, what would be their clashes on either, on either side? Israel, what would you propose? Thank you, Chair. Um, as I mentioned previously, for me uh, personally, I would prefer the evening. Um, that's a, our personal choice. I still request for the floor from United Arab Emirates. United Arab Emirates, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, sorry, it was my mistake. A European Union, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, the European Union's member states would prefer to do it at lunchtime in view of the many working groups that are already meeting in the evening. However, we also would raise the question of if there's not the possibility of doing it in parallel to the cow itself. Oh, that's an interesting uh, proposal from EU. It could, uh, it could deliver us. Can't we have it concurrently with the cow? We ask, uh, but the problem is uh, the, the interested delegates are many. We may have uh, problems of quorum where we have uh, few delegates, but if that's uh, okay, I'm happy to go with it. Can we have it concurrently with uh, the committee of the whole? That would solve the puzzle. Do you have any objections to having uh, the contact group proceed as the committee of the whole proceeds? If there are objections, let me see your flags. Sound is a solution. Uh, so, New Zealand, uh, there seems to be consensus that we can have the two run uh, concurrently, uh, the contact group as well as the committee of the hall. So let the secretariat identify a room, uh, communicate the room, and then uh, the delegates will have to divide and we have the contact group go on as uh, the committee of the hall goes on, and that solves the conflict at lunchtime as well as the evening. Thank you very much, EU, for that innovative uh, uh, proposal. All right, we shall move to agenda item 22. Let me invite the secretary to introduce document 22 on review mechanism and national legislation program. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The secretariat would like to introduce document 22, which reports on the progress to implement resolution 12.9 and decisions 12.6 to 12.9 on the establishment of a review mechanism and a national legislation program. In relation to the review mechanism, the draft template for the communication of a possible implementation matter was prepared by the secretariat based entirely on the admissibility criteria adopted by COP12. The template was adopted by the Standing Committee and it's contained in Annex 1. Since the template was made available over a year ago, the Secretariat has not received any communication that has triggered the procedure of the review mechanism set out in Resolution 12.9. The Secretariat will continue its efforts to promote the availability and use of the review mechanism. In relation to the National Legislation Program, the Secretariat had been requested to prepare legal inventories and a questionnaire based on the information accessible through the national reports and instruments of ratification and accession. However, these sources were inadequate to ascertain compliance with Article 5. 
three five, sorry. Consequently, additional steps were undertaken to fulfill the request from the COP. The Secretariat developed a questionnaire for parties to complete in order to fill in knowledge gaps concerning implementation of Article 3.5. Thirty-nine countries submitted the completed questionnaires to the Secretariat. The responses were used to prepare an initial set of legislative guidance materials and a model law for the implementation of Article 5.3.5 contained in Annex 2 and 3. The Secretariat will be able to finalize the analysis and recommendations soon, which will result in the drafting of national legislation profiles. It was agreed by the 48th meeting of the Standing Committee that the information regarding the implementation of Article 3, Paragraph 4a and b, will be collected from the national reports. However, the data received was not sufficient to fulfill this task. The Secretariat carries on these aspects of Decision 12.6 and proposes to collect legislation from parties that have submitted the questionnaires to be able to prepare technical guidance on best practices relating to Articles 3, 4, A and B. The document proposes the adoption of new decisions that will provide guidance regarding the implementation and promotion of both activities. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Secretariat. I now invite uh, comments on uh, document 22. I recognize Australia. Australia thanks the Secretariat for the work it has undertaken on the national legislation program. Upon examination of the legislative guidance material contained at Annex 2, we note that a section references out-of-date text from Australia's national environmental law, the Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act of 1999. Paragraph 43 of the guidance material should be amended to include the correct text, and we'll be happy to provide the correct material to the Secretariat for incorporation. Thank you. The European Union. Thank you, Chair. The EU and its member states take note of the template for communication on a possible implementation matter contained in Annex 1, legislative guidance material relating to implementation of Article 3, Paragraph 5, contained in Annex 2, and model law for implementation of Article 3, Paragraph 5, contained in Annex 3. We also agree to delete decisions 12.6 to 12.9. The EU and its member states also support the adoption of the draft decisions with some changes, and the changes are necessary from our point of view in order not to lose sight of the requirements of Resolution 12.9 with respect to the National Legislation Program. The National Legislation Program is a very important step forward for CMS. For that reason, as was decided at COP12, the program also covers Article 3, paragraphs 4a and b of the Convention as Article 3, paragraph 5. These obligations contain some essential obligations, such as the removal of barriers and restoration of habitats, and the questionnaire of the National Legislation Program should also include questions on those paragraphs as was decided at the last COP. In that regard, Chair, we are proposing several changes regarding draft decisions 13AA, 13BB, and 13EE, which are quite extensive in nature, um, but uh, essentially implement what I just said, that we are looking forward to, or we would like to um, include into the questionnaire these questions on Article 3, Paragraph 4, A and B. And I ask for your advice, Chair, whether you want me to introduce the changes that we also send um, here or how to proceed. Thank you. Uh, given that you, 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 you alluded to the fact that the changes are comprehensive, uh, we can as well, uh, depending on how other delegates uh, uh, think, <coughs> we can think of another contact group on this issue. But 
uh, you can leave the comprehensive uh, uh, comments for now. What I take is that you have uh, uh, some changes to make. Continue and finish the European Union. Thank you, Chair. And as I said, I think the uh, changes are not that substantive in substance, but uh, rather just implement this one point that um, I was raising. So we are proposing changes in draft decision 13AA directed to the Secretariat. And we would like to delete the existing paragraphs B and C and add new paragraphs A, B, C, and G. And these new paragraphs will give a mandate to the Secretariat under A to revise the national legislation program questionnaire to include requests for information on the implementation of Article 3, paragraphs 4, A and B, as was already requested in order to implement section 2, paragraphs, paragraph 2 of resolution 12.9, which we adopted at the last COP, and as was decided in decision 12.6, para C, adopted at the last uh, COP. Furthermore, under paragraph B, we would give a mandate to the Secretary to promote the completion and submission of the revised national legislation program questionnaire by parties and its submission to the Secretariat. Under a paragraph C, we would give the mandate to the Secretariat in cooperation with relevant partners to support parties as necessary and subject to available resources through the provision of intra alia guidance materials, model laws, technical assistance and capacity building workshops in relation to Article 3, paragraphs 4A, 4B and 5 as provided also in Resolution 12.9, Section 2, Paragraph 7, adopted at the last COP. And finally, under G, we would ask the uh, Secretary to ensure participation in the discussions on the review mechanism for post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework that, in a sense, is a different point um, where we would like to ensure that Exactly that happens um, where we have discussions on the review mechanism that the Secretary would be um, involved in those dis debates. And as a consequence, uh, Chair, the existing paragraphs A, D, and E um, will become paragraphs D, E, and F, and that's an editorial point. <clears throat> Furthermore, in draft decision 13BB directed to the Standing Committee, we would propose the deletion of para B and in draft decision 13 EE directed to parties, we propose that the new paragraph A reads, parties are strongly encouraged to submit information regarding their legislation and other domestic measures relating to implementation of Article 3, paragraphs 4A, 4B and 5. And again, that was provided in section, oh sorry, as provided in section two, paragraph two of resolution 12.9 on the basis of a questionnaire developed by the Secretariat. With addition of this paragraph, the existing paragraph B should be deleted and the existing paragraph A will become paragraph B. I hope everyone could follow. <laughs> Finally, um, we stress the need and I said that uh, to explain one of our changes already, the need for the CMS Secretariat to be involved in the relevant discussions on the review mechanism to be developed in the context of post-2020 Global Diversity Framework, um, just to stress that point again. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, European Union. Do we have any further requests for the floor on this uh, agenda item? Okay, I see no request for the floor. Uh, that could suggest that the proposals by EU are 
generally agreeable. So let's have the proposals submitted to the Secretariat. Uh, they be included in the uh, amended uh, document, and then we can look at it later. We may not need the, a contact group given that uh, there are no uh, contrary views. <coughs> Is that agreeable that we receive the written comments from EU, the Secretariat integrates them, and then we look at the document later? I see no objection, so that will be the approach. Let me invite uh, a European Union to introduce document 27.4 on reservations with respect to amendments to appendices 1 and 2 of the Convention. Uh, I understand Germany uh, will present this document. Germany, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I s still speak as my previous intervention on behalf of the EU and its member states. And we, the EU and its member states, proposed the draft resolution contained in the Annex in Annex 4 to document 27.4 on reservations with respect to amendments of Appendices 1 and 2 of the Convention made after the 90-day deadline. In the past, the CMS Depository Government accepted late reservations in case of unanimous consent of all parties to the Convention, based on Article 19 and 20 of the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties. We are convinced that acceptance of late reservations after the 90-day deadline could generate legal uncertainty and therefore proposed this resolution. And additionally, we noted that the Convention does not contain any guidance stating which date is to be considered the date on which a reservation is withdrawn. And for that reason, we believe that the draft resolution will give clear guidance to the depository government and to the parties with regards to the admissibility of reservations and with regards to their withdrawal. And allow me to say, uh, Chair, the same approach was adopted at the 18th meeting of the Conference of the Parties to CITES. The EU and member states invite all parties to support the proposal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, EU. I will open the floor uh, for discussion of document 27.4 as introduced by European Union. Israel. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we thank the EU for preparing this document and highlighting the issue of reservations and seeking ways to clarify um, how they are used and to make sure that um, the information on their use is, is uh, clearer. As we mentioned in the opening session the other day, um, we feel that the use of reservations, although the convention actually allows it, does undermine to some extent the obligations and goals and the overall effectiveness of the treaty. And we would prefer to see in the language of the resolution, in the preamble at least, and if not, maybe in the actual operative paragraphs, specific language to that effect, urging parties not to use reservations unless there's some specific national reason why such a reservation is necessary. Um, and to give the impression that the um, not just the impression, but to uh, emphasize that the reservations is not necessarily the best way to go when a party um, uses them. I, we didn't prepare any specific text. Um, if you 
allow us, we could submit it maybe or just speak to the EU about trying to in incorporate this into the um, resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Israel. <coughs> Do you have any further requests for the floor on this? Brazil. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Uh, just regarding the comments by Israel, uh, we'd just like to say that uh, we also have to be careful uh, and, re and remind ourselves that the, the reservation is also a measure of flexibility in the convention uh, and that it is necessary to maintain these, uh, these possible ways of adapting the, con the, the, the convention to, the, to each country's needs. Uh, I think um, not necessarily each every country will present reservations. It, it is usually something that is uh, is not common, but it is a valid uh, it is a valid resource for many countries. And we would like to see the language that will be proposed for this. Thank you. Conservation first. Thank you, Brazil. Thank you, Chair. We would like to echo the comments of uh, Brazil and reservations are a sovereign right of any parties in this convention and in other conventions. And nothing and not, nobody could impede a party to exercise its right. And according to the document presented to the regarding, sorry, to the document presented by the European Union. Uh, the Vienna Convention is very clear, and uh, we think that further legal advice from the UN legal office should be sought on this matter, because uh, some reservations uh, were uh, uh, lodged only few days, if not hours, after the deadline, so there should be a certain uh, flexibility in this, and the Vienna Convention provide for this flexibility. So uh, the issue is much more subtle and much, has much more legal implications than the document of European Union provides. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Conservation First. Um, do we have any further requests for the floor on this? If there is none, I will uh, request the Israel to provide the text uh, that is proposed to be added. And uh, I would uh, request that that be done in consultation with uh, Brazil. Uh, so let me request Israel, EU, and Brazil to look at uh, the proposed uh, addition. And once it is agreed, it will be submitted to the Secretariat. Since EU is uh, the proponent of this document, I will request EU to, uh, to take lead of uh, that small friends of the chair uh, that with Brazil, Israel, and, uh, and EU to agree on uh, uh, the text to be added. Just to add that, of course, uh, the text must be in the spirit of the Convention and indeed in the spirit of uh, Vienna Convention uh, to which uh, we all subscribe. Does that uh, seem to be an acceptable way forward on this issue? I see no objection, uh, so EU kindly uh, discuss with uh, Israel and Brazil and agree on the best uh, uh, way forward and then you submit the text to the Secretariat. Let me uh, invite distinguished delegates uh, to focus on document 23.1 on review of decisions. I now invite the Secretary to introduce the document. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
The Secretariat would like to introduce document 231, which reports on the implementation of those decisions that are not addressed in any other document. The document also makes recommendations to the Conference of the Parties on further action to be taken in relation to these decisions, namely their deletion or renewal. The following decisions have been proposed for deletion. 12.2 and 3 on the Scientific Council. 12.15 on Communication, Information and Outreach Plan. 12.89 and 90 on Sustainable Tourism and Migratory Species. 12.102 on Taxonomy and Nomenclature. 1205 on sustainable development and migratory species. 1206 and 7 on arrangements for hosting the 13th meeting of the Conference of the Parties. The following decisions have been proposed for renewal. 1236 to 39 on the conservation of African Eurasian vultures. 1253 and 54 on the conservation and management of whales in their, and their habitats in the South Atlantic region. The Secretariat would like also to recommend to the Conference of the Parties the deletion of two decisions addressed in two COP documents, but without an explicit recommendation of deletion. Decision 12.1 on the rules of procedures, now that the Secretariat has completed its work and the rules of procedures have been adopted. And decision 12.42 on the adverse impacts of anthropogenic noise on cetaceans and other migratory species as new decisions have been proposed in document 26.2.2, REF1. Thank you. Thank you, Secretariat. I will now invite comments on document 23.1. I do not seem to see any requests uh, for the floor. Yeah, I see Nore now. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'd just like to congratulate the Secretariat for following up on the last COP, and, and it is important to, to review uh, all decisions and uh, uh, make a new list after each um, conference of the parties, which is very useful for uh, not just the committees, but also the, the parties, secretariat, uh, on their tasks in, in the coming triennium. So it's a very good exercise and uh, encourage the secretariat to follow up on that. Thank you. Thank you, Nori. Do we have any further requests for the floor on document 23.1? Mm -hmm. I see no requests for the floor. Do we have any objections? to this meeting uh, adopting the decisions uh, in annex to the document 23.1. I see no objection, so I take it that uh, this meeting um, agrees that uh, uh, these decisions in the document 23.1 be recommended to the plenary for adoption. Let me invite the Secretariat to introduce, to introduce document 23.2 on review of resolutions in respect to decisions 12.11 and 12.12. Secretariat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This document reports on implementation of tasks directed to the Scientific Council in Decision 12.11. That is the review of Resolution 7.18, RevCOP 12, regarding the range date agreement for the Dugong Conservation, Resolution 8.16, RevCOP 12, on migratory sharks, and Resolution 6.3, on the Southern Hemisphere Albatross Conservation. It should be read in conjunction with um, document 26.2.7 on chondrichthon species, sharks, rays, skates and chimeras, which was already introduced uh, yesterday. The document proposes to repeal resolution 7.18, RevCOP 12, and resolution 6.3, RevCOP 12, and the deletion of two decisions, 12.11 and 12.12. .12. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you, Secretariat. I now open the floor for discussion of document 23.2. I do not see any request for the floor. I now come back to the meeting. Do we have any objections to recommending um, to recommending uh, decisions and the resolution contained in 23.2 for uh, consideration by plenary? I do not see any objections. I take it that uh, this meeting recommends uh, uh, the deletion of decision 12.11 and 12.12 and repeal of resolution 7.18 uh, Rev COP 12 and resolution 6.3 Rev COP 12. It is so recommended. Let's proceed to document 24. I invite the Secretariat to introduce document 24 on review of the conservation status of migratory species. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, as one of, as exception to the, say, rather brief introduction that we are doing in general to document, uh, uh, we would like to give a bit more details on, uh, uh, on this document, uh, uh, which is as a kind of document uh, being submitted uh, uh, to the COP uh, uh, for the first, uh, first time. So we have prepared uh, for, uh, for that uh, uh, a PowerPoint presentation. I I'm mindful of time, try to avoid to go into too much detail. But at the same time, would like to illustrate some of the uh, um, main analysis uh, uh, and compilation of data that we have uh, undertaken in the compilation of this, uh, uh, of this report uh, and uh, uh, have some consideration on, on that. But this just illustrates briefly uh, the, uh, the structure of the document that has been submitted, uh, which consists of a cover note, uh, which uh, uh, includes uh, a draft uh, uh, decision and a series of uh, uh, technical annexes. Uh, the the preparation of a report on the conservation status of migratory species has been in, uh, in the agenda uh, of CMS uh, uh, for uh, a number of years. Uh, without going too much back uh, uh, in time, just reminding the last uh, uh, the decision of the uh, last meeting of the Conference of the Parties, uh, the, the COP12 in Manila uh, endorsed the preparation of a report on the conservation status of migratory species as an activity to pursue within the CMS program of work for 2018-2020. Uh, since uh, COP12, uh, the Secretariat has been uh, uh, fundraising for the production uh, of the report, uh, but unfortunately, uh, the fundraising effort uh, have not been able to produce sufficient uh, resources uh, to contract out the production of the report, uh, as it was intended when the uh, uh, activity was included in the program of work. And while fund fundraising efforts are being uh, continued, uh, the Secretariat has under, uh, decided to undertake a compilation of information uh, on the conservation status of migratory species covered by CMS appendices uh, using its own uh, capacity uh, with a view to submitting at least a preliminary review to COP13 uh, and uh, as a stepping stone towards the production of a more comprehensive uh, report that uh, we consider should be the uh, aim of the Convention. The document which is in front uh, uh, of you is doc document 24. Uh, uh, a, a preliminary version of this had been submitted to the uh, fourth meeting of the Sessional Committee uh, of the Scientific Council, who had uh, reviewed it and made a series of uh, uh, recommendations uh, for its further uh, development, uh, which are, have been uh, then taken into account uh, and uh, uh, used in the production of the of the current version. 
uh, of which the one in front of you is the, is the Rev1, uh, which uh, um, they added a few, uh, uh, a few further consideration and uh, later analysis uh, with respect to uh, the version that was submitted by, by the deadline. Well, basically, the, the main uh, uh, exercise that we have undertaken uh, has been uh, the, the compilation uh, uh, of uh, uh, information uh, concerning the status, trend, uh, and uh, threats uh, according to the red list uh, of IUCN, uh, using information extracted from the uh, uh, red list uh, uh, database. And this has been done for uh, uh, all the uh, 173 species, uh, uh, including Appendix 1, the uh, two, 273 species uh, uh, listed on Appendix 2, and uh, in addition, species considered covered uh, under uh, Appendix 2 by higher taxa uh, listed in the appendix uh, that brought to the, the total to 530 uh, species. We hope you all had the possibility of, uh, of looking at the document. This is the basic form in which uh, the information has been, uh, uh, has been compiled in a tabular format for all uh, uh, the species uh, uh, considered. Now, on the basis of the information so compiled, uh, we have undertaken a series of, uh, uh, of analysis, preliminary analysis uh, on, uh, uh, on those data. Uh, which I would like to very briefly uh, illustrate uh, with the following uh, um, slides. The first analysis that we have undertaken is the analysis of the percentage of species assessed in the different red list categories uh, for the three main, uh, main clusters that I already uh, mentioned. And then, uh, not illustrated in this, uh, in this slide, uh, for each uh, cluster for the uh, main uh, higher taxa, uh, the ma ma mammals, uh, uh, birds, rep reptiles, and fish. Another analysis that we have undertaken is uh, uh, the uh, percentage of species assessed in the different categories of population uh, uh, trends. Uh, again, for the three main uh, clusters uh, uh, by appendix and uh, uh, for, the main, uh, for the main taxa. This slide illustrates only the, the main analysis uh, per uh, cluster by appendix. And then we have undertaken uh, uh, analysis of uh, uh, threat uh, as categorized uh, and defined by uh, uh, the IUCN Unified Classification of Direct uh, Threats. Um, well, it, this, this just uh, it, the slide illustrates one of the uh, uh, how the analysis has been uh, has been conducted, uh, considering all the three different hierarchical level uh, uh, that uh, the IUN classification of threats uh, uh, considered. This has been done for all species and under it also in uh, disaggregation uh, uh, by. Uh, um, uh, append by um, uh, groups uh, and within groups uh, by regions. Then in addition to this uh, uh, compilation and, and analysis that we have undertaken uh, uh, at the Secretariat, uh, uh, we have been able, thanks to uh, uh, funding uh, uh, from uh, uh, the governments uh, of Germany and, and Switzerland, and uh, in, uh, in synergy with uh, uh, the work undertaken for the assessment uh, uh, or the implementation of the strategic plan for migratory species, uh, we have also been able to uh, 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 contract uh, uh, analysis of some uh, uh, key uh, indicators. Uh, which are already considered by the Strategic Plan for Migratory Species. Uh, these indicators uh, include, uh, in this case, uh, is an um, indicator on the uh, coverage uh, by uh, protected areas 
of uh, key biodiversity areas uh, identified uh, as important uh, for uh, migratory species. We have been able to uh, um, produce different uh, uh, disaggregation uh, of, these, uh, uh, of this index. Uh, the previous one concerned in general all, uh, all CMS listed species and all migratory species uh, uh, considered by, by IUCN and uh, in this case, in, the, in this other slide, we illustrate uh, uh, disaggregation by, uh, by uh, regions. Another index considered is the uh, red list uh, uh, index, uh, which is well known. Uh, we have uh, uh, again, different uh, disaggregation that uh, we have been able to, uh, to produce. Uh, this work has been done by, by BirdLife International on, uh, on, uh, on behalf uh, of uh, uh, WCMC, who was contracted by us. Um, many, most, most of the data presented concern birds, uh, which were the group for which uh, data were more uh, uh, um, uh, reliable. We are not, not going to illustrate all, uh, all of these uh, in, uh, in these in these slides, and uh, uh, also in this in this case uh, for uh, for various uh, uh, regions. Finally, the last index we have been able to consider is the uh, Living Planet uh, Index uh, that monitors the average change of abundance. Uh, of vertebrate uh, species over time. Uh, again, this has been done uh, um, for various uh, the disaggregation, and the work has been done by the Zoological Society of London. These are included in separate uh, uh, annexes. And this is a disaggregation of the Living Planet Index by uh, major taxa. I think you can, we can skip this. Okay, uh, I would like just uh, uh, in concluding uh, uh, making some uh, uh, very general consideration on, uh, on, on main findings. Uh, again, this slide illustrates uh, uh, the analysis uh, by, uh, uh, of the various uh, uh, categories uh, in which uh, species are for which species are assessed. Um, one consideration uh, that uh, uh, is, uh, is obvious uh, uh, is that uh, uh, while uh, uh, many of the species listed uh, uh, correspond uh, currently to the uh, uh, say guidelines uh, uh, provided by the Convention to, through Resolution 11.33 in terms of listing. However, a certain number of, uh, uh, of species uh, actually are assessed in categories that uh, in principle uh, would not uh, qualify for listing uh, uh, under CMS. Uh, this is no doubt uh, uh, the, the result of the history of, uh, of the Convention that the different uh, uh, um, the, uh, the change uh, in, in criteria for, uh, for species listing, uh, but potentially also of uh, uh, genuine change uh, of the uh, uh, conservation status of species uh, over time uh, since uh, they had been, uh, been listed. And uh, this seems to be and was also recognized by Scientific Council as one of the uh, uh, element that would need to be uh, analyzed in, in greater detail uh, in uh, any further development uh, of, this, uh, uh, of this report. Another uh, consideration uh, concern uh, the uh, uh, trends uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, species, in uh, the conservation status uh, of the uh, species listed uh, in, the, in the appendices. Uh, a not, not surprisingly, perhaps uh, a majority of species uh, uh, is uh, 
uh, has a decreasing, uh, uh, decreasing population, uh, population trends, uh, which go up to uh, three, four, three quarters of all species on Appendix 1, uh, and uh, around 50% uh, of, uh, of species uh, uh, on Appendix 2, uh, with significant differences among, uh, uh, among the taxa, uh, with, uh, with birds and, and, and fish uh, appearing as the, uh, the groups uh, uh, with uh, uh, more rapid uh, uh, decline. Um, at the same time, there are also situations of uh, 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 population, population uh, of species with the host population is stable or increasing, which again uh, uh, could well represent uh, uh, say, uh, success stories in terms of conservation. And then uh, uh, in terms of analysis of threat, uh, uh, with all the, the caution that this uh, um, would require, one uh, uh, obvious consideration that appears is the fact that uh, biological uh, uh, resource use uh, appears to be by, by, by considerable margin uh, uh, the, the threat impact, impacting the, the highest number of, uh, of species. Um, this, is, uh, uh, this requires a lot of caution, as I was saying, uh, but uh, as in itself, uh, this seems to suggest uh, the, the, the need and desirability of, uh, of further uh, analysis. And basically, uh, this, uh, this uh, short consideration uh, are those that inform uh, the uh, draft decision that uh, uh, is, uh, is proposed uh, for, uh, for consideration. Uh, to, the, uh, to the conference of the parties in terms of uh, mandate to the secretariat for uh, uh, further work. And I think I can leave it at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretariat. I will now invite uh, <coughs> comments from uh, delegates on uh, document 24 and its uh, uh, annex, which contains uh, draft decisions. European Union. Thank you, Chair. The EU and its member states welcome the document prepared by the Secretariat and support draft decisions presented in Annex 1 of the document with minor changes which we will submit in writing. We further welcome the continuation of this work envisaged in program of work for next triennia. We consider this report to be first step in the analysis and review of conservation status of migratory species listed in the appendices. We recognize the importance of further work and in-depth review of Appendix 1 listed species that do not meet listing criteria, especially with regards to circumstances under which they were originally listed and to provide recommendations whether these species still merit Appendix 1 listing. However, we emphasize we do not wish to encourage the listing of any species without prior thorough scientific analysis. Furthermore, we are deeply concerned with the information given in Annex 3 of the document, which shows that 96% of all Appendix 1 listed species are impacted by biological resource use, which includes intentional use, hunting, and collecting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, EU. Please uh, forward the proposed uh, changes for consideration. Australia. Australia thanks the Secretariat for preparing this item. Australia was supportive of the development and application of the CMS guidelines for assessment of Appendix 1 and 2 listing proposals. So we note with interest that of the species currently listed on Appendix 1, only 86 or 50 per cent meet the current criteria for listing and 155 or 59% meet the criteria for listing on Appendix 2. We recognise that the mix of conservation status on both appendices is a historical legacy. Many species are included in the appendices prior to both clear interpretation of terminology used in the Convention and the establishment of the current guidelines. The credibility of the Convention is important. Not only should listed species be clearly migratory, but they should also have an unfavourable conservation status. Parties should be focusing on species with the greatest need. 
We would question why species with an IUCN red, red list ranking of least concern are included on either appendice. Australia supports the proposed decision to undertake an in-depth review of the conservation status of species listed on Appendix 1. We note that attention will first be focused on those species assessed as least concern on Appendix 1, and it may be that some of these species would benefit from remaining on the appendices. Some may be a good news story for the Convention, and some may require delisting. Until this issue is looked at further, it is difficult to determine which species could benefit from remaining as listed on the appendices and which species should be removed. We understand the draft decision at Appendix 1 was not available for discussion at the Sessional Committee meeting in November last year. We would therefore appreciate it if the Secretariat could elaborate the intention behind including a directive to undertake an assessment of the impact of direct use on the conservation status of species listed on Appendix 1. This recommendation is at Decision 13AA, subparagraph C. It is unclear why of the threats acting on Appendix 1 listed species, direct use has been singled out for this particular assessment. Thank you. Thank you, Australia. May I kindly once again request the interpreters to give us only five minutes. Thank you very much. I will now take uh, South Africa. Thank you, Mr. Chair. South Africa knows and appreciates the work that has been done so far under the preliminary report in relation to the conservation status of migratory species. However, acknowledging and noting that Annex 3 of this document only talks to the global population listed, not even considering a geographic population in some species, as indicated in the document. Based on this, South Africa, for, and for consistency purposes, South Africa would like to recommend geographical population or regional assessment to be considered in the review process in moving forward, especially to give a clear picture in terms of conservation effort that are happening on the ground. For example, in the region, we do have the Red List of Mammals, which was developed in 2016, and this provides the latest status of mammal conservation or conservation status that is happening in the region. Thank you. Thank you, South Africa. I have uh, IUCN, UNEP, and the uh, intern IFAO. I am going to give you one minute each, strictly one minute. If you have a long statement, kindly submit it to the Secretariat for inclusion in the meeting report. Let me take IUCN. Thank you, Chair. IUCN welcomes the draft decisions in document 24 and is ready to support their implementation where possible through contributing its expertise on analysis of data included in the IUCN Red List. With regard to the proposed assessment of the impact of direct use on the conservation status for Appendix 1 listed species in draft decision C, we note there are potential overlaps with work proposed in several other draft decisions in document 21 on applica application of Article 3 of the Convention and document 26.4.3 on addressing unsustainable use of terrestrial and avian wild meat and we would encourage coordinated implementation of these decisions. IUCN would also like to note that the conclusions of the sustainable use assessment currently being conducted through the Intergovernmental Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services will also be relevant to this issue. IUCN will be working with Zoological Society of London and other partners to support this assessment by providing a detailed analysis of the impact of use on the extinction risk of species assessed on the IUCN Red List which we expect to be published in mid-2020. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Aysen. UNEP WCMC. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. UNEP WCMC would like to highlight the importance of this work to the overarching goals of CMS. While the preliminary analysis showcased by the Secretariat, as well as the progress report for the strategic plan, provide a good starting point, as a convention, we still do not yet have a full picture of the state of migratory species. To fill this knowledge gap, we need to make a concerted effort. For this reason, we are supportive of the further work to develop a review of the conservation status of migratory species, as well as a more depth review of the conservation status of Appendix 1 species. 
We would also like to point out that there will be a new process undertaken in the CITES context to look at their Appendix 1 species that may provide insights as this moves forward within CMS. Thank you. IFO. Thank you, Chair. As this is the first time IFO has taken the floor, I'd like to extend our thanks to the Government of India for hosting this meeting. I'm making this intervention on behalf of I4 BirdLife, Born Free, Humane Society International, NRDC, Ocean Care, WCS, WDC, and WWF. In the interest of being brief, I'll shorten it, but send the full um, document to the Secretariat. Our organizations welcome the intent to more systematically assess the status of migratory species listed under the convention. However, we wish to note also that the preliminary analysis of the IUCN status of CMS species highlights that collectively 22% of species listed on Appendix 2 are rated by IUCN as extinct in the wild, critically endangered or endangered, which under CMS guidelines suggests they would qualify for an Appendix 1 listing. The analysis also shows that resource use of these species is by far the most the predominant threat affecting 93% of all Appendix 2 listed species, which further suggests an Appendix 1 listing may be of merit. Therefore, we recommend that parties amend the draft decision 13AAB to also review Appendix 2 species listed as endangered, critically endangered, or extinct in the wild to see if they merit listing under Appendix 1 of the Convention. As the Executive Secretary said herself at the opening of this meeting, the Convention is not keeping pace with the biodiversity crisis we are facing. Any review of the status of migratory species should help ensure that we are not letting any species fall through gaps in our convention. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Aifa. Um, we shall wait uh, to receive uh, written comments uh, for improvement of the draft decisions, and then we shall, of course, uh, have another opportunity to look at it uh, later. Brazil, are you asking for the floor? Because uh, we have uh, lost time. The interpreters gave us only five minutes, and they are over. But uh, let me give you half a minute. I'll be very quick. Just to say that uh, we think that the proposal, the proposed text language by IFAO seems a great idea, and we would support that. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. Uh, that's very good. So forward the... Uh, written comments to the Secretariat, and uh, we shall have another opportunity to look at it as CRP. Uh, this brings us to the end of our morning session. Uh, this meeting is uh, thus adjourned. Uh, we meet again at 3. Enjoy your lunch. There are announcements, administrative announcements, by the Secretariat. Uh, kindly listen to them. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First, I want to let people know that the working group on the application of Article 3 will meet in Exhibition Hall 1, Working Group Room 5, beginning with the afternoon session today. Uh, second, the, uh, there will be two signing ceremonies immediately after this session closes relating to the Raptors MOU and the Sharks MOU, and hopefully you can stay for that. Thank you.